Hey guys, this is Brent with Western Equipment, and in this video I'm going to be giving you a full walk around and overview of this John Deere 3043D, so let's get started. Now to start, let's talk about model number, and this is always such a confusing thing for a lot of people when they're going out and they're looking for tractors. But like we said, we are with the 3043D. I know that's a little hard to see there. We'll start here at the first digit. The first digit is going to be the series of tractor that this is in. So with the three being here, you have the one series, the two series, the three series, the fours, the fives, the six, sevens, eights, and nines, which once we get six, seven, eight, nine, we're talking about large series tractors. One through five, we're talking about subcompact and compact tractors. So this being a three, we are right there above the subcompact level, right in the compact tractor level. So we are a good size tractor here for moderate um, to light duty work. Now, as we move back, the last three digits here are going to indicate horsepower or close to the rated horsepower so we have here 043 so this tractor is actually going to be rated closer to 42 horsepower but with that 43 we're getting pretty close and that is what that will designate now the last letter is always going to be a trim level so on a lot of these tractors we'll, we would have just e m's and r's e being the lowest down in the economy level m being a mid spec and r being the high spec or most loaded out model but in the three series we have a separate trim level here which is going to be the D trim level and we'll go over a little bit more what this means but this is going to be kind of a specialty tractor in this lineup. Now we'll start here at the front and kind of move our way back. Now some of the things that you will see here on this D series are going to look very very similar to the other three series whether it be in the E series or the R series mostly going to be comparable to that E series tractor. So first thing we'll point out is this tractor does have the 300 E loader on it. Now of course this is an option you do not have to purchase the loader with these tractors but this most of the time these will come with that front end loader this is also going to have the same john deere style quick hitch that we have on most on all of the john deere loaders in this series so this will be an easy to be able to change out into whether it be pallet forks a different size bucket maybe even a small hay spear things like that you do have this loader now with this loader you will have the lifting capacity of right around 1200 pounds at the pivot so that means right here at the pivot point right there where the bucket connects to the loader you'll be right about 1200 pounds now once we get out like if we had something out on forks that's going to dramatically decrease so don't take that 1200 pounds as i can lift this thing up fully height to 1200 pounds that's going to be if we we're lifting a very heavy load where we're mainly focusing right here at the back of the bucket just getting that off the ground a little bit and moving that around now lifting height on these loaders you're going to be right at seven foot you're going to have 84 inches of lifting height so plenty of height to be able to get this thing up and into barns different places where you may need to store things great option there with the loader we also do have the grill guard here um, or front guard here with this model now of course again once again this is optional equipment so just remember that but that is an option but you'll notice here that the styling and everything is the same the model number is in the same place the pinstriping everything's the same the hood design is the same as those other three series tractors we are still going to have the headlights on this machine as we would normally everything is going to open the same the hood has that same latch system that uses the key to be able to pop this open and then we can remove side panels so we can get to those different engine components so next let's go ahead and talk about the engine i'll go ahead and pop this open here and we are just using the key from the machine to pop that hood once we get that raised up everything like i said here is going to look very very similar to the john deere 3e series you are going to have your battery down below here right down below your headlights as we move back we are going to have our radiator and our overflow tank here along with our cooling components and then right behind that we're going to have our dpf filter or our diesel particulate filter this is going to be um, the exhaust cleaning system on these tractors and then right behind that we'll also have our air filter here now like i said before these side panels are removable they're very easy easy to remove they have two twist clips here that we're just going to turn and then once we turn those you are able to pull this out and off very easily and that's just going to help you gain access to the other components of this engine now this engine is going to be a 42 horsepower three cylinder yanmar engine so in the e-series the highest horsepower that we can get to is 
38, but in the D series models, they're gonna start at 25 and go all the way up to the 42 horsepower model. Now on this engine, some of the main service points or most of your main service points are going to be over on the right hand side of the engine. This is where we are going to have our oil dipstick right down below. We're also going to have our water separator and our two fuel filters and oil filter all over here on the right hand side. So most of your maintenance will happen over on the right hand side of the machine, which is nice that they've kept everything over here. Now our hydraulic filter and hydraulic fill are gonna to be towards the back of the machine, which I'll show here in a minute. But just remember that whenever we are doing maintenance on this machine, the right hand side is where we'll need to be. Now in the operator stations where you're gonna really start to see the main differences in this tractor from the E series or the R series. As the D series is gonna be a more basic tractor, meaning that it will not have the hydrostatic transmission where we simply have a forward and reverse pedal and then one gear selector to be in that high or low or neutral. This is going kind of back into the day, back to what a normal style of tractor used to be like. You're going to have the clutch over here on the left hand side, and then you're also going to have a set of two ranges right to your left here to be able to choose an A range or a B range. You're also going to have four gears over here on your right hand side where you can choose that one, two, three, or four. And then we are going to have a reverser here on the tractor where we can go from reverse up to forward. But the thing about this is that any of these changes that are going to be made, whether we're changing from forward to reverse or we're changing gears over here one through four, or if we're changing over here ranges, everything is gonna have to be done with the clutch. So there is, this is not a power reverser. We cannot be in second gear traveling along and then just simply throw this thing into reverse like we normally would on either a hydrostat or an, a, a higher series of tractor that has that power reverser. Everything here has to be done with the clutch. You are still gonna have your throttle to the right-hand side of the machine here. You are going to have your light switch over here on the right-hand side as well. We do have a turn signal switch here to the left of the steering wheel, and we also are going to have that switch there for our DPF system. So this is something that we always need to keep in auto. You do have the option to turn it off, and I do not suggest that ever. I would always leave this switch in the auto position. That way this machine is able to clean itself Itself and clean the exhaust filter system as it's needed. Now there may be times that it flashes up a light to you that is showing like that puff of exhaust as you'll see here on the switch with the P next to it and that means that you need to stop the tractor, go ahead and park it and then push this button up into that parked and it's telling you that this machine needs to do a parked regen or a parked cleaning of the machine. So we need to be mindful of that. If we see that, this is where this switch is really going to come into play. Now some other things here in the operator station that you're going to see are going to be pretty familiar. We have our PTO engagement also over here to our left. So it's going to be forward for on, back, for off. We do have our toolbox here on the left hand side or storage container that you can open up, keep some of those tools on board. A lot of the time on new machines, this is going to be where your operator manuals are. So if you get into one of these machines, the salesperson didn't happen to give you the operator manuals, always give a good check right here because they're more than likely going to be stuck right in here. And then to our right, we do have a cup holder and then we also have another little storage cubby right here. And then we also are going to have our three point uh, hitch raise and lower over here to the right and you will have with that the lockable position here where we can unscrew this knob slide this down once we've found the position that we want our three point in and then lock that in that way when we put our three point up into the raise or lower mode right there it's going to lock into that position then down here in the center we do have of course our key switch here and then we're also going to have our parking brake over here to the right now what you'll notice that it is also a little different is we're used to our brake on the e-series tractors being over here to the left now on this machine they are going to be on the right and they do have the dual braking system where you can lock these pedals together or you can simply unlock them and use one or the other for needing to make those tighter turns. For most operators, I would say to always keep these locked together. You're gonna need them locked together for whenever you put on your parking brake, as how we're going to do that is push in on the pedal and then raise up on our orange lever here, our parking brake, and that is gonna hold those brakes 
into place. Now also down next to our brake pedals, we are going to have a foot throttle here that we can push forward. So that way if we're going, we're traveling, doing those different things and we don't want to constantly be using our hand throttle, we do have that foot throttle right down here that's nice and convenient. And then also back behind that, we're also going to have a differential lock, which is nice. We can push down with the heel of our foot, lock those the rear differentials in, make those wheels spin at the same time. If we're in those sticky situations that we need to get out of, you do have that rear differential lock right down here, easy at your foot. Now, right in between your legs down here, right underneath the seat, you are going to have your hydraulic fill right here. And then you're also going to have your hydraulic oil dipstick right down here as well. To the left of that, right here we're going to have our service advisor port now on this tractor i do have the tractor plus smart connector connected to this if you want to check that out learn more about that i'll leave a link to that down in the description below and then to the left of that we also have our front our four wheel drive engagement or our front wheel assist engagement that's just simply going to be pulling up to engage that pushing down to disengage and then you can easily put this tractor into four wheel drive or leave it in two wheel drive now you are going to have a seat belt on this tractor and I highly suggest if you're in any of those hilly situations, maybe you're mowing along a hillside, whatever those things may be, to go ahead and have this seat belt on. It is there for a reason. You're also going to have your ROPS here, your rollover protection system. Now this is very important as this is a safety feature of this tractor that if we were to happen to get in that situation where we were to roll this machine over, let's say we were tipping over to our left here. One thing that we would want to do is of course be strapped in, holding on to the steering wheel, leaning away from the fall. And then as this tractor tips over, this ROP system is meant and is built heavy enough to keep this tractor from rolling all the way over on top of you. So if you're in those situations, I definitely suggest having this up. As you'll notice, it does have the brackets here that allow you to lower this. That way we can lower it for times that maybe we're needing to store this into a low clearing garage, or maybe we're doing some work under some low lying trees where we don't want to get hung up on. You can fold this ROPS down. And last but not least, over here to the right of the steering wheel, we do have our jo joystick for the loader now this is going to be a regular loader joystick that we would see on just about any machine it's going to have the instructions here on it it's also going to have the loader lock out here to the right that way if we're doing work we have this loader raised up we want it to stay in that same position where we can't bump this joystick and accidentally move it we can pull that lock out and then we'll notice that we cannot move our joystick here so we don't absolutely accidentally bump this and happen to move that loader when we're not intending to. So before we go check out the rear, I'm just gonna give you a quick driving demonstration on this tractor to show you the difference of what we're talking about here. So to start this machine up, first of all, we're gonna have our foot on the clutch here on the left-hand side. Make sure that everything is in neutral. Our shifter on the left, our range selector on the right, and our forward and reverse selector here. Make sure everything is in neutral. Go ahead and start the machine up. Once we start it up, of course, raise our bucket up. First thing that we want to do is leave our foot on the clutch at all times until we're ready to drive. Next, we're gonna choose our range down here on the left. So I'm just gonna put it back into B. Next, we're gonna choose our gear. So over here, I'm gonna put it up into two. I'm also going to let off on my parking brake by pushing in and then lowering that lever. And then I'll go ahead and put our driving selector right here up into forward. And then what I would do is I would just slowly let off of this clutch and the machine would start to take off just like that. Now to stop, I'm gonna push on the clutch. Then I can pull this machine back into reverse, slowly release. If I wanna stop again, I'm gonna hit that clutch and I can also hit on my brakes as well. Just remember that anytime you are going to be doing any driving function on this tractor, you do have to use the clutch to change those gears. So unlike a lot of machines where we're going to be hitting the brake every time, we wanna make sure that we are hitting the clutch and the brake to be able to put this machine into that stop position. 
And then every time we're changing a gear or we're switching from forward to reverse, we also have to make sure that we are using that clutch. So now let's talk a little bit about the rear of the tractor here. Now everything you're gonna see, like, once again, is going to look very similar to that 3E series tractor. One of the nice things is the diesel fill is here at the rear rather than being up on the hood. But one thing that is different is you will have a manual fuel gauge on this D series rather than it being up on the dash. So you have to keep that in mind when you're looking for that fuel level, you are gonna have to look back and to your right to see that fuel level. It's just one of the features that did not make it onto the D series that did make it up in class to that E series. Now, once again, we do have the category one three point hitch back here. So any category one implements are going to fit back here. Now, one thing that you'll notice here is I do have on this machine, I have telescoping draft links. Those are not gonna be a standard feature, but I have added those to make it easier to hook up implements. As you can see, we can pull those out, get a little further reach, making it easier to hook those things up. We are going to have the standard 540 PTO here. We do still have the dust cover on that, but you have that 540 PTO. And then also you're going to have this adjustable draw bar. So the nice thing about this is it is as simple as pulling out this pin, scooting that in, putting the pin in, and replacing our linch pin. That way you're able to fit multiple different implements to the rear of this machine. Now, another part here at the rear is where we're gonna see a lot of difference in this machine as opposed to the E-Series. Because with these D-Series tractors, you're getting a lot heavier tractor, you're getting tractor with a lot more lift capacity here at the rear. Because opposed to a 3038E model, you're looking at about 1,350 pounds of rear lift here at the back and on this tractor here the 3043d we're looking at almost 2100 pounds of lift so with that heavier stature you are getting that more lift capacity you're getting a heavier footprint and by the way the difference in the weight between a 3038e and a 3043d is about 600 pounds so a lot of that is going to be the difference of the transmission it's just a heavier built heavier built front axles heavier built rear axle to give you that extra strength, that extra lifting capacity, and more pulling power as we have more weight, more horsepower, and more power to the ground. Now these tractors are gonna be primarily used for those applications such as pulling applications. A lot of times we'll see these in different areas, maybe dairies um, or orchards or different things like that that are going to need a, to be pulling wagons, such things like that. Maybe this is a tractor that is used out on the farm where you have a lot of mowing to do a lot of rear pulling to do you need that extra lifting capacity here at the rear for those heavier rear attachments maybe we're grading roads with it multiple multiple different things that these d-series tractors are good for now the one thing that these tractors may not excel at necessarily is the loader work being as that you do have the clutch we have to shift gears and change it's not as easy stop on the go as a hydrostatic transmission but as far as putting this tractor in gear finding that speed that you want and putting this machine to work this is going to be a great option of tractor. Another thing to touch on that may lose a lot of people and may not seem like a big deal to a lot of people is going to be tire options. Now on these three series, these three D series tractors, you are gonna have three tire options. Here gonna, is gonna be an example of an R4 style tire. This is kind of a middle of the road, not a turf tire, not quite an ag tire. This is going to be great for multi different functions. Now you do have the option to go for those R1 tires that are gonna be more of an ag style tire it's going to have the sharper bars in it or you can also go down to a turf tire where you can change that out from the front or the rear so lastly here let's go over dimensions on this machine and hit just briefly on service intervals as i'm going to have a complete service video for this machine talking all about the grease points all where all of the filters are and at what times to change them and when that is up and ready it will be down in the link in the description below so be looking for that so as far as as dimensions go the main one that we always get is height so you are going to be looking about seven and a half feet tall with the ROPS up and then if you lower the ROPS you're going to lose about two feet so you're gonna be looking at about five and a half so very easily will fit in those seven foot openings six foot openings to go into your garage now lengthwise what we're looking at here is if we do have the front end loader and the bucket on you're looking at about 148 inches or about 12 feet four inches and then if you take the bucket 
and load her off, you're going to lose about two feet again. So then you get right around that 10 foot mark from the nose all the way to the end of the three point arms. Now, as far as width goes, you're going to be about 63 inches wide, whether you have the loader on or not, because the outside to outside of the rear tires is going to be 63 inches and the outside of the cutting edge on the left side to the outside of the cutting edge on the right side of the bucket is also going to be 63 inches. Now, service intervals on this tractor are gonna vary a lot. You're going to have many different types of service. You're going to have 10 hour services. You're going to have 400 hour services and 1200 hour services and multiple ones in between. So one thing that I would highly recommend to you is that you are, if you are looking into one of these smaller tractors, this three series tractor is to get the tractor plus smart connector. Like I'd mentioned before, that is going to save you a ton as you can go right there, connect to the tractor, to your phone, check those service intervals, and it'll actually send reminders to you of when to do those different types of service. And like I said before, be looking for that video on how to service this tractor as I will be putting that out there. So I hope this video helped you out. I hoped I was able to tell you everything that you needed to know about this John Deere 3043D. And if you feel like I left anything out, you have any other questions or comments, make sure to leave those down in the comments section below. But if you did like this video or you found any value we just ask you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel as that helps me out as well and don't forget to check down in that description for the links to the tractor plus smart connector video the service video to this machine and also that link to 247parts.com where you can go to find all of your parts that you may need for your john deere equipment whether it be for this 3043d your lawnmowers tractors gators compact instruction equipment whatever those things may be make sure to check that out and also make sure that you are checking our other their channel 24 7 parts for all the how-to videos on this type of equipment and as always guys thanks for watching we'll see you next time hey guys make sure to check out this cool video and this one buy your parts right up here and subscribe right here